This is going to be a Bible, King James Bible study for any brother and sister in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Um, and I'm going to do a study on quite a big topic for me. Um, something I, um, like all new believers. Uh, when we receive uh, the faithful word of our Lord and we receive the uh, gift of the Holy Ghost we don't really fully appreciate the or understand what it's, we've received until we, we grow in the word and study the word and one of those big, big topics that um, I had difficulty uh, keeping a focus and understanding was the Godhead and uh, so I have prepared a study on this very topic of, of the Godhead and the Lord and God and uh, I never as a as a, a Bible believing born again Christian I never really had any background past well, growing up, I didn't have any uh, Christian influence, really. So I didn't know all the different denominations. I didn't know all the divisions and all the different camps and all the disagreements and, uh, or, you know, the plants, the deliberate tears that are sown to cause division. And uh, so I never really heard... I've heard um, brothers give uh, talks on the, uh, the Godhead and sometimes you, you can think uh, you can get a bit tangled up in it because of the way it's been described and uh, I never really knew anything about the uh, Trinity or what's what the actual trinity is and where that teaching come from and where that phrase come from which is not like rapture because rapture is actually a biblical doctrine whereas as i understand what the trinity means as i don't i don't fully know the history of how that phrase come about it's not something an area i've really studied to um, refute in understanding that it is a uh, an imitation of the Godhead and calling it something else and using the scriptures to reinforce the deception so um, some people might even interpret the Godhead as the Trinity uh, but but there is a machination behind the use of the word trinity so it can be very confusing because some brothers could sound like they're talking of teaching of the trinity so i am not gonna not gonna mention trinity any longer i am just gonna i've prepared a study and written all the scriptures i've learned since i've been a christian and i want to really put these down to uh anybody who's like myself um, trying to understand the uh, biblical Godhead and it's something you, you, you've you been gifted with and uh, it's I'm gonna I've divided this, my study into what the Lord has taught me through through my studies I've, I've divided it into the Old Testament where the old te the old covenant teaches you'll see the Trinity but if you didn't it, it, from the New Testament you won't see uh, not the Trinity forgive me the Godhead you won't see the Godhead in the Old Testament without being baptised into the covenant through Jesus Christ so I have put 
the, uh, the two scriptures, the New Testament scriptures, which fit perfectly with uh, the Old Testament scriptures, how God revealed himself um, through the prophets and through the ministering of the angel of the Lord, which is the the preeminent uh, son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and how God is one God. And uh, so I'm going to go through the scriptures and allow the um, scriptures to reveal what the truth is. So don't, please don't take my opinion, but um, I'm going to uh, go through the scriptures one at a time and the scriptures and the Holy Spirit will reveal the truth so if I make a mistake or get uh, my words mixed up which is quite possible uh, know this that you, you must trust the scriptures and uh, check out what it is I'm saying in the scriptures so I'm, you know you're not being misled um, one of the reasons I started really sharing my testimony and, and the things I've learned was because I struggled and so I want to convey and really it, it, I want to encourage anyone that's really like myself who is weak feels like oh, it's too much to you give anything for the Lord, you know, um, and you feel overwhelmed, you feel unconfident. So that's really a, about my heart and testimony is really to, the Lord said to raise disciples, to make disciples. He, he commissioned the apostles to, you know, um, raise disciples, encourage brothers and sisters to be disciples, to shine and... Uh, so I want to really convey, it doesn't really matter what, um, how you measure yourself, uh, one, one person is just as vital as the next and even the most weakest of people have got um, something wonderful to give. So if you're not feeling very confident, I just want to um, share that uh, hopefully that will convey in, in the spirit of... Um, what I'm addressing to unfold in the, in the Holy Word that it may lift you and give you confidence and uh, help you abound in your walk in, in the Lord. Um, so I'm going to start with one scripture because this is really where this is Deuteronomy so this is the, the Old Testament books written by Moses and the record of uh, the Lord's dealings with um, with his children and calling the prophet Moses. So all now when on when it came to Jesus' ministry, they the Jews didn't recognise the Lord Jesus Christ um, as God, as God the Father, as a God's Son um, in the flesh, or the Father sending his son in the flesh and uh, so they didn't recognize the father in Jesus his son in the flesh and so that's why the Jews really rejected rejected the Lord Jesus Christ so I'm going to show the two where the Lord is in the Old Testament the Lord Jesus Christ and the Son of God who is God and reveal all the scriptures to show that the, that the manifestations in the Son and, and by the Holy Spirit are all one, they're all one Spirit, they're all one, one God and one Lord and Jesus is the Lord and uh, the Father is the Lord but the, the, Jesus is the, the Lord in the flesh, in the Father and that's and the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of of God, testifying of the Father and of the Son, and that they are one, that they are one one God. 
one Lord and one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And that is true. And uh, we're going to go to. Um, I'm going to look at some examples and uh, now I'm going to take you through quite a lot. So I don't know if I'm going to finish this study all in one go, but I'm going to take you through some examples. And there's one one example I've forgotten, which has just come to my mind was when the Lord. Now this is a preeminent. Um, I'll read the scripture in a minute, but I think it's in John, where no but no man has seen the Father. So consider that scripture, because that, that, that is key. So when Abraham, before the destruction of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, and the Lord came to Abraham, and Abraham was concerned about the righteous, would the Lord destroy the whole city? and revealing his intentions in to, to Abraham, showing him and telling him what he was going to do. And, the, and Abraham was concerned, you know, Lord, are you going to question the Lord? Would you kill, you know, will you destroy the righteous with, with the wicked? And the Lord uh, reassured him that, you know, that he wouldn't, that he would remove those righteous before he would destroy the wicked and Abraham was speaking to the Lord he was speaking to God but it wasn't uh, the father it was the son in the father come come in the spirit to speak to Abraham and reveal the Lord's intentions and we're going to go through the scriptures where the father ministered through his angel which who is the Lord Jesus Christ is the angel of the Lord and he spoke for the Lord because he's God's word, he's God's son and we're going to share um, that relationship in the, in the prophets, in the kings and in the high priests, in the priests and the, and the body, the one body of Israel, the nation of Israel, the seed and, in, and the uh, Godhead in Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the seed and in that relationship between the inheritance of blood. So there's a lot of ground to cover and a lot of scripture. So we're, I'm going to start with um, Melchizedek, which is in uh, Genesis 14. Uh, forgive the shaking of the camera. Genesis 14, verse 13. Um, now, a Abraham's um, going to war with some uh, some kings. I'm going to start in verse uh, 13. Um, yeah, 14, verse 13. And there came one that had escaped and told Abraham, the Hebrew, he dwelt in the plain of uh, Mambre, the Amorite, brother of Eshel, and brother of Ana. And these were confederate with Abraham. Abraham. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued pursued them unto Dan and he divided himself against them he and his servants by night and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah which is on the left hand of Damascus and he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the woman also and the people and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chedorlaomer and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shaveth, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, uh, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham 
of the Most High God, Possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. Um, and the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, <clears throat> that I will not take from a thread even to, to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldst, shouldst say, I have made Abraham rich, save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me, Aina, Eskol, and Mambre, let them take their portion. So this is in the Old Testament, we have just this brief mention of Melchizedek, king of Salem. He was the priest of the Most High God. And Abraham, the uh, chosen father of the seed of, of Israel, is um, honouring and paying tithes to this king of Salem, king of peace, king uh, priest of the most high God. And he's the only person with that title. And he's only found in this one one time in the Old Testament. He doesn't he doesn't appear again just this once. So this person, now some people say this is Jesus, but it, it, it's not Jesus because um, we have a, a record in the book of Hebrews that this character was a, a priestly order and a type of the Lord Jesus Christ, just like the Joshua, the high priest, was a type of the Lord Jesus Christ because the Lord is, is the high priest. He's the prophet and king. Um, right, let's go to Hebrews. Chapter 7. Uh, verse 1 to 8. Right, this is uh, Melchizedek. Uh, for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being, by interpretation, king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. So we see there that um, this king, this uh, priest to the Most High God, was without father, without mother. Now we can speculate how that came about. Maybe his, maybe the Lord just created this person out of the dust. Perhaps this person's uh uh when he when the child when the child was conceived the father died and when the mother gave birth to him the mother passed away and and the lord raised the child perhaps that's why he was chosen i don't know i'm speculating but he wasn't jesus he wasn't but he's a type of the priesthood of the lord jesus christ he was the high priest to the most high that is a that's the testimony um so i thought i'd cover that ground because that is a, a precursor one of the precursors like joshua like uh, the prophets like the patriarchs like the seed like abraham isaac and jacob they're precursors to the seed the king the high priest the prophet the Lord and God, the Son, the Son of God, the, the Most High. Um, so I thought I'd start there and 
one more thing is to go to King David in in the Psalms King David's Psalm and this is a messianic Psalm so King David is speaking in prophecy in the spirit of the Lord um, he is Where am I going? Wrong way. He is testifying of the Saviour and the, the Son being equal with the Father. Um, so it's like a prophecy. Um, Psalm 110, I'll read 1 to 7. And the Lord said unto my Lord, so this is David uh, speaking, or right, speaking as the Lord. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So we've got two lords there. Now David was a king, and he's not, he wasn't a, well he was a lord, but he wasn't the lord. The Lord said unto my Lord. So you could see David as a, uh, an heir of the Lord, a son of the Lord, a child of the Lord. And in his stead as king, so King David was a type of Christ because he's the king of Israel. Like God is the king of Israel and the Lord. So David was messianically prophesying of the Lord's death, burial and resurrection and his victory over sin and death and making all his enemies, bringing all principalities to an end, making them his footstool. So it's a testimony of himself through King David. And the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And the Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. So that that's a testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ on the right hand of God. Of God the Father and the Lord is his uh, is the is the, is the son, the chosen son, the prophesied uh, Lord to come in the flesh the Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of wrath and that's a future prophecy of of the wrath to come, of the judgment to come to the, na the, the whole world and Israel the wicked in Israel and uh, to bring them uh, through the fire to bring the uh, righteous branch from what remains out of the ashes to bring the uh, it, to save Israel in in that moment in one one day has been prophesied in one day he's going to save the nation of Israel through that fire he shall judge among the heathen, he shall fill the places with the dead bodies, he shall wound the heads over many countries, he shall drink the brook in the way, therefore shall he lift up the head. So he, um, I'm not sure he's, uh, he shall drink the brook in the way, if that's a reference to his atonement, and uh, Therefore shall he lift up, and because of his victory in the grave, he shall lift up the head. He shall be a, he shall be a, an ensign of light and a, a testimony, a living testimony to come. And that's uh, King David's prophecy. And I'm just going to cover Roman, uh, Romans eight. Uh, and like uh, I said, King David being like an heir, in, in a son, an heir, just like the saints, just like Israel, the children of uh, Israel, the seed, the people of Israel. Um, 
There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Jesus uh, Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not, not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, content, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it, it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the flat body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye, not, ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness, we are spirit, that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subject, subjected the same hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travail in pain together until now, and not, not only they but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are safe by hope, but hope that which is not uh, that is seen is not hope. For what man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see, see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he, he, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he make intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things worketh together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he he has also glorified. 
What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecutions, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So there's um, a wonderful promise how that we are brought into to brought into the kingdom brought into uh, adoption into to be heirs with the lord and how that he's um like king david on, on uh, that like the lord is on his right hand we are heirs with christ on his right hand he's on he's the executive arm and word of the father the Father and Jesus are one God and we are adopted into God through Jesus Christ and we have been justified by him we have been a, a predestined because we've received his justification and accepted his atonement and uh, he saved us and made us heirs, sons and uh, He's ever, ever making intercession for us. Right, so I'm going to skip now across to the Old Testament. Um, to show how Heavenly Father, how God the Father uh, administered to, uh, to Israel. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, his angel, the angel of the Lord. Um, and how God is one. And the same God as one saviour, one God, one Lord. And one spirit, the spirit of God. In in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, let's, let's read uh, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9 chapter 9 well they've got chapter 9 oh I know why right ok I've marked down some scriptures and forgotten what they were here we go right chapter 9 uh, shall I start it's a prophecy of Isaiah speaking messianically of the Father, now how that Jesus, how the Son is the Father, and how Jesus is the God and the only Saviour. And this is what uh, Israel, this is what the Jews couldn't comprehend because they're expecting, they don't believe that, uh, I, don't, I don't know what they believed about their Messiah. Um, but it was clearly prophesied that all through all through the righteousness of the past of their forefathers, not before the uh, the rebellion and the the curses, but when Israel were righteous in their peak, who believed in Jesus, they believed in the Lord, they believed in the coming. Lord in the flesh, they believed the, the Father's word. And Isaiah is prophesying of the future of the Lord's advent. Um, 
Now, uh, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty, God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David. He, see, he put David on his throne. And he's on, he is the king of Israel. And David was his type, like, like the type of the Lord. My Lord said unto my Lord, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou here on my right hand, till I make thy enemies thy footstool. So David as a child was a type, a type of Christ. And Christ is a type of the Father. He is he's the Son in the Father, and of the Father, and with the Father. And this is the prophecy of him and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even for ever the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this and he did on the cross um right let's i had a scripture come to mind um, i've forgotten it um and the bear come back to me. Uh, right, let's go to um, now. Yeah, it's, uh, that's it, Psalm 2. It is unmistakable. That prophecy on its own is uh, unmistakable. That, uh, a child, a son is born. So uh, there's only one begotten Son of God. And... Uh, he came in the flesh and he was wonderful counsellor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. It, it is uh, all over the Old Testament that the Jews didn't believe because they were cursed and they were cut. They, they um, rejected their Messiah barring uh, a few, barring those that the Lord drew unto himself and uh, those uh, pure, uh, more, more weak and, well, perhaps pure in heart and uh, save them, uh, the, the, the Twelve and the uh, early church. Um, Psalm 2, verse 1. Uh, Kiss the Son, does he be angry, capital earth? And he perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. So there's another prophecy there of the Lord. Right, let's turn to Exodus 23. Now there's so many areas you can go off into into really deep studies but I just wanted to give some key mark areas where uh, it brings it all together into your testimony of the Lord and uh, that Jesus is God Jesus is the manifestation of the Father in the flesh and the Father and the Son are one Lord and one God and it was shown time and time again in the Old uh, Testament. Now I can only understand this because of, it's been given to me on a plate. So I couldn't honestly say if I was a, 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 ch a child of Israel in those times, I would have grasped, grasped it. I would, I would have missed it. I'd have had to be exp explained to me. I'd have been a right dingbat. Um, if I was uh, who I am here, back in time, uh, and and you'll notice um, as we read through the scriptures, how you know how um, simple at heart Moses was. I'm not. I'm not. The, you know, to his, to the Lord's glory and to the credit of Moses for his faith. I'm not um, belittling Moses in any way. Uh, 
in 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 no way would I do that. I um, look up to Moses. He's like a, an integral part of um, the the Holy Word. I mean, but it does show that his human frailties and his childlike belief and his childlike trust, just like Abraham, how all these uh, beloved prophets were like children they really are you know they were men they you know abraham just took took several kings down to rescue his brother you know i wouldn't say he was a weak man but his heart was a child as a child in in the presence of god he knew god and he trust god and feared god and had faith in god but Although Moses saw God, he still lived by faith. He didn't. Uh, it's an incredible thing to, to to compare the Old Testament and the New and see that they're exactly the same. It's just that the Lord, before His physical advent, manifest in exactly the same way, but He hadn't been in the flesh and He hadn't. Um, had the victory over sin and death and given the baptism of the Holy Spirit but you can see in the Old Testament how with the Holy Spirit how it's it, it's exactly the same administration un, unto his seed, unto his children through the Lord's advocation but the Lord is personally appearing but they still live by faith from day to day because they don't have the Holy Spirit. They just they're, they're going by instruction. So they go. The Lord tells them something, and then they have faith in it, and then it comes to pass. But they don't know it's going to come to pass, but they trust it will because they have faith. Um, so I'm going to look at Exodus 23. Verse 15 to 25. Uh, verse 15. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Uh, is this Moses or Abraham? This will be... Oh, I'll find out. Uh, this must be Moses. Um... Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded thee, in the time appointed at the mouth, month of the month. Abib, for in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall bef appear before me empty. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labours, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of getting gathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labours out of the field. Three times in the year all thy mouth shall appear before the Lord, the Lord God. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, neither shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until the morning. The first of the first roots of thy land that thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God, thou shalt not seethe a kid in his mother's milk. Behold, I send an angel before thee, to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, and do all that I speak, then I will... Be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Um, for mine angel shall go before thee, and bring thee into unto the Amorites, and, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and quite, quite break down their images. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. 
So, carefully, let's read this. Behold, I send an angel, capital A, before thee, now, now the Lord went before, this is before Moses, uh, the angel of the Lord went before uh, the, the, the seed of Israel in a pillar, a cloudy pillar. And um, I'll read that scripture. But this is before the Lord speaking. This is the Father speaking through the Son. Behold, I send an angel. So the Father saying, I, I send my Son. I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee in the place which I have prepared. Beware of him. Why beware of him? And obey his voice. Because why you obey his voice? Because he is God's word. Provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. So the name of the Lord is in him. He will not pardon your transgressions. Because he has the authority of the Father. Do not provoke him. Obey his voice. Beware of him. So he is the angel of the Lord, who is Jesus Christ. Um, let's go to Genesis 26. <clears throat> oh, Genesis 22. another account and Abraham took the wood, the wood and burnt offering and laid and and Abraham said uh, let me start again um, I'll start in um, I'll start yeah, I'll start there verse 6 and Abraham took the word of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son and he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went both of them together and Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said my father and he said here am I my son and he said behold the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for a burnt offering and Abraham said my son God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering so they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord, calling unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram, and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. 
And he said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because, because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou has obeyed my voice so we see a wonderful analogy there and that, and that's why Israel are the promised people because of their father the, or Abraham the father of their seed because of his faith to give up his son for God and God pr provided the ram who is Jesus Christ a type of Jesus Christ as Abraham is a type of the father Isaac is a type of the son and the Lord provided the offering and blessed Abraham and all his seed and all the promise that will be fulfilled in this prophecy through through the seed of Abraham where where the son of God the begotten son of God would um, appear and and uh, would walk in the flesh and the son of god would be manifest in the flesh and die for the sins of the world to save israel and all the world and it says there and the angel of the lord called unto him out of heaven it's the angel again the lord's the lord's word and the and uh and the angel of the lord capital L, capital O, capital D, the angel, the son of the Lord, the son of the Father, called unto Abraham out of heaven a second time, and said, By myself have I sworn. So the Father is speaking through the angel and said, By myself have I sworn. So when the Father speaks, when the Son speaks, he's speaking for his Father. I and my Father are one. I have come to do the will of my Father. The Father so much loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. That all through him, forgive me for not quoting the scripture, but all through him may have life. Um, and we see there, even in, in Abraham's life, the Lord is revealing his, his nature, his... Uh, his um, spirit, his son, his uh, glory, his word, and his uh, prophecy through the life of his chosen uh, son, Abraham, his chosen son, Isaac, Abraham's the father. The father has a son, the seed, Isaac, and Isaac come from the father and Isaac has a seed Jacob who is Israel who come from the father the bosom son in the father Abraham we have the father Abraham has a son who gives birth to a nation Israel the father and the son and the Holy Spirit indwelling the children of Israel through the son, the seed, Isaac, through the father, Abraham, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, indwelling the nation of Israel to come, the prophecy that the nation will be saved in one day. Let's look at some more scripture. Um, Exodus 3. This is Moses. So, let's just say, um, is it Exodus 3 or Exodus 33? Right, uh, 1 to 7. Exodus 3. One to seven. Now Moses kept the flock of Jephro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. 
and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in the flame of a fire out of the mist of a bush and he looked and behold the bush burning with fire and the bush was not consumed and Moses said I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not that nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place thereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. So he's seeing uh, the Son of God. He's seeing God in the, in the Spirit, ministering in the angel of the Lord, who is God is God the Son and when the Lord called that he turned aside to see God called unto him out of the midst of the bush the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush who's the Lord and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God God called unto him out of the mist he turned aside to see God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said Moses Moses he said here am I and he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for thy place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God, the angel of the Lord. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So there is another account of the Father, the Lord, through his angel, his, his son, his word, the Lord, that Moses looked, hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. He was afraid to look at the angel of the Lord who's God so there we have another manifestation of of the Son the angel of the Lord well, let's go to let's look a bit further on to Moses his, uh, his uh, relationship with the Lord and God the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob and uh, how he was revealing this to to his uh, prophet to for um, for the benefit of his glory and realized in the children in his seed in his promise to Abraham by right, um, Exodus 13 um, 16 to 22 and it she shall be for a token unto thine hand and for frontlets between thine eyes for by strength of hand the Lord brought us out us forth out of Egypt and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led him not not through the way of the land of the Philistines although that was near for God said lest preadventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt uh, just an interesting note here about repent uh, repentance means uh, about an about turn, a change of mind or a change of course. So God's using the word repent in the antithesis sense of repenting away from God's will rather than repenting towards God's will. I thought that was an inter interesting uh phrase there uh, that they didn't turn around and desire to go back back to uh, Egypt when they saw um, 
when they see war, so the Lord took them a different route in case he spooked them. They were spooked and, and repented and, and, and didn't follow the Lord. They wanted to go back to return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way, the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up, harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Succoth, and encamped in Epham, in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud, to lead them, lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire, to give them light to go by day and night. To go, uh, he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Uh, there we see, right, um, two more scriptures regarding the Lord and going before the seed of Israel. Um, and when the people heard these evil tidings, they mourned, and no man did put on him his ornaments. For the Lord had said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are stiff-necked stiff people, I will come, come up into the midst of thee in a moment, and consume thee. That therefore now put off thy ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do unto thee. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb, and Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that every one which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. Capital L, capital O, capital D, talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy fa uh, sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. So we see a, a wonderful thing there in the heart of Moses. He's trust in the Lord. Now he's, Moses didn't know fully what the Lord meant and his promise. Even though Moses uh, talked with the Lord face to face, Moses wasn't in the loop. And the Lord was leading Moses and Moses was being obedient to the Lord and conveying, being the intercessor, a type of the Lord to come. So Moses was the prophet, the word of God. And the Son is the word of the Father. And he put the he was teaching his son, Moses, the word. And and uh, we see that Moses spoke with the Lord face to face. Now um let's just quickly Yes, scripture. Now, scriptures can't the scripture can't be broken, so every scripture has to. Um, you think of a ruler. You think of the first, uh, whether it's uh, apes or apes of an inch or millimeters. 
it, every every millimeter's got to be the first one has to be the second one has to match the first one and the, f the third one has to be matched the first two otherwise you're going to get inaccurate measurements and it's not going to be accurate or st a straight ruler it's not going to be you know it's it it's not going to be true and uh all all the scriptures are have to be that on that principle they all have to agree with one another otherwise you don't get a true inch or you don't get a true um measure you don't get a true rod and uh so i'm trying to convey all through the scriptures um showing exactly the same thing the consistency of what what is in the old testament was what what was revealed in the lord jesus christ in the flesh and he is uh the saviour and god of all mankind and israel's saviour he's israel's king israel's messiah israel needs their messiah and uh his prophecy says he's going to bring Israel through the fire and the wicked are going to be uh, cut off. Well, I'm scratching around for John and I keep passing it. Right. John 10. I think this is the scripture. Uh, John 10. No, that's not it. Is it First John 5 or John 14? John 14, 3. Uh, no, I think it's 1st John 5. No, it's not. Um, anyway, uh, um, I'll find it. Let's try John 8. No, that's before Abraham. 1st uh, John 4. seen God at any time if we love one another God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us so there we go that's the scripture I was looking for hereby know we that dwelleth in him and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit so um, key scripture no man has seen God at any time well if no man has seen God the scriptures are lying then the old uh you know either that jesus wasn't god wasn't the father or he was now i've shown you the scriptures where it backs up that jesus was because of the prophecies in isaiah and the psalms and what the revealing of speak the angel of the lord god speaking by his angel to abraham from heaven and Moses from the burning bush and face to face in the pillar of cloud and it says no man has seen God at any time um, so no man has could because no man can look on I think in the Old Testament no man can look on God and live so the scriptures can't be broken so so God's not lying in the scriptures he's just revealing He's, he's using his son to draw Israel and all the world unto himself. And then through his son, 
they can enter in with the Father, with the Son going before us, that we could look upon God, the Father in glory, who is in the Son, the Lord, in the flesh, Jesus Christ. Uh, let's go Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9. Then I'm going to have a break. I'm going to pause. Um, so bearing in mind what I have just said. Uh, Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. I think it's chapter 6. Okay, doke. No. No. Yes. <clears throat> right. So, in the year that King Uzziah died, so also the Lord. I also saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high up, lifted high and lifted up and his train filled the temple above it stood the seraphims and he will lift up an ensign to the nations I've jumped the wrong page each one had six wings with twain he covered his face and with twain he covered his feet and with twain he did fly and one cried unto another and said holy 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 is the Lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke then sighed I woe is me for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for mine eyes have seen the king the Lord of hosts Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he hath taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he said, and he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And I I will go for us and who will go for us then said I here I am send me so there we see that the prophet Isaiah sees the Lord of hosts in his, in in um, upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple Isaiah realised his filthiness and his uncleanness and was fearing and the Lord sent an angel with a hot coal to purge him of his sin, his iniquity that he could look and he could bear his presence which is a type of Christ and we look and then we're seeing there the Lord on his throne it, who is God, who is Christ who is the Lord and God and he was seen on the throne in the temple right um, well I'm going to have a break and come back right let's have a quick recap um, now I've nearly come to the end of the first half of the scriptures of the Old Testament Revealing the Godhead, revealing the nature of of God in the Father, in the Spirit, and by the Spirit and by the Son. Um, a few more scriptures to get through, and we're going to recap on uh, just some more um, examples in the Old Testament of of the Lord working through his prophets, through his angel, through his son in in a, an account of Deuteronomy so I hope brothers and sisters anyone who perhaps is um, 
struggled with uh, being caught out by phrases and terms and camps like the the Trinity and trying to find understanding. I hope so far it's been a blessing and uh, sharpened and aligned your focus like it like it did me. Um, And I was just thinking to myself, um, while I had a, a cup of coffee and a break, how blessed I, I am to be able to do this. I, I had to pinch myself and to really, you know, praise and thank the Lord for showing me these wonderful scriptures, this wonderful witness, which is just so deep and uh, you know, at the everlasting waters and uh, of the scriptures, and I think it's something that will be appreciated forever in eternity. It's the Holy Word, um, the expounding of the Word. Um, I think it's an eternal, eternal book. It's an in, uh, a beautiful, wonderful, unfathomable piece of writing. From the from the word of the Lord by the Holy Spirit, through His prophets. Let's go. Let's go to a quick scripture. Uh, Hebrews chapter one. So we've looked at how the Lord works through types and shadows and patterns, and I'll read the scripture in Hosea, where it the Lord testifies of this. And then how it's fulfilled, how the pattern and the prophecy it was fulfilled, how the prophets were fulfilled, how the high priesthood was fulfilled, how the covenant was fulfilled. Um, God, who in sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past, time past, unto the fathers, the fathers of Israel, by the prophets, have in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, the prophesied Messiah, the prophesied Counselor and Saviour and Almighty Wonderful, Father, the Mighty Father and God, who have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. So God, through his word, through his Son, made the world. He being the brightness of his glory and the expre express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand, the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he have by, her by inheritance, being God's son, obtained a more excellent name than they. And for unto which of the angels said, At any time, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee, begotten thee in the flesh. That's my dog. <laughs> and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, his son, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of his and of the angels he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers ministers of flame of fire? But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever a sceptre of righteousness. Uh, a sceptre of righteousness is the sceptre of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hand. They shall perish, but thou remainest. And they all shall wax old of thy garment. So we see the, um, the, the, the the father sending his son the glory and the fulfilling of the prophecy. How the the Lord the Son is equal to God. He is God, and uh, fulfilled the um, 
prophecy of the fathers of the promises to Israel and that he came in the flesh as we've we've um, we've gone through well right Jose let me, let me find the scripture um, I'm not sure where that is in Jose Uh, 12, yep. I, uh, this is Jose, um, chapter 12. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions, and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. So the Lord speaking, through his word, his mouthpiece, his son, through his prophet, his chosen and called and set apart, the burden of the Lord. And the Lord has spoke through Hosea. I have also spoken by the prophets, speaking through his prophet Hosea. And it's in past tense, it's speaking in past tense. I have spoken by the prophets. I've multiplied visions and used similitudes by ministry of the prophets, which we've just read in Hebrews 1, was fulfilled in the prophesying of his son, who was revealed by the prophets, a multitude of visions and similitudes in the lives of those people and their environments, and by the ministry of the prophets, and the prophecy of the word of the Lord fulfilled in the Son, Jesus Christ. Um, right, let's... What was I going to cover? Uh, right, let's look at all the... Uh, the, the Lord testifying of him of his deity and of that there's only one saviour and, and there's only one God and uh, how that was fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ and how the, the son as we've just seen if, as we've just revealed the word has just revealed is equal to the father um, and, in, and, and this was all testified in the prophets multiple times in similitudes in, in, in the uh, administration to Abraham and through the offering of his son Isaac and through the um, life of Moses as he appeared in the bush and uh, spoke with Moses and, and then prophesied of uh, how he would deliver uh, the children out of Egypt and how he went before them in a pillar of cloud and how he was manifest in that pattern in these patterns, in these similitudes which repeat themselves and they were fulfilled and testified in the flesh in Jesus Christ so let's look at the um, the word, the word of the Lord in Isaiah, through Isaiah, um, verse 11. Even I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no saviour. I have declared and have saved, and I have, I have saved, and I have showed when there was no strange gods among you, therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. So the Lord has saved, and there's no saviour. So if it wasn't for the sins of Israel, and the sins of the heathen nations and Gentiles of the human race, all, all the human race needed saving, how were they saved? They were saved by the Son, prophesied by the Word, through the Word of the Son, of the Father, of to the Saviour to come, who was to take 
all iniquity upon his shoulders, who loved righteous, who was holy, who was wonderful, who was sinless, and he would come as the sun, kiss the sun, Psalm 2, and the prophecy of the sun, the patterns of the sun revealed in the flesh in Jesus Christ, fulfilling the word and glorifying the Father as he's glorified on the right hand of God the glory of the Father, equal with the Father. So we have the prophecy there from Isaiah of this very uh, fulfilled prophecy. Um, let's go to 45, 21. Let's go to 5. I am the Lord and there is no none else. There is no God beside me. I guided thee, though, has not, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me, I am the Lord, and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness, I make peace and create evil. I am the Lord, I, the Lord, do all these things. So there we have it. Jose, let's go back to Jose. There's another reference, exactly the same thing. thy God from the land of Egypt and thou shalt know no God but me for there is no saviour beside me so there's another <coughs> testimony that the Lord and God is the saviour of Israel and there's no God beside him and Israel rejected the Lord like he prophesied because of Israel's wickedness and hardness and rebellion, they generationally that they inherited that uh, the sins of their fathers, who were out of the way, because they fell away from the righteousness of their fathers, which was of God, which was of the Son, which was of of the angel of the Lord, the Word of God, and. The, the Lord breathing that word for his word through his prophets and the fathers believed uh, but uh, if, uh, Israel fell away and I'm going to show briefly how the um, how it how the Old Testament refutes um, replace um, replacement theology that the church the Christian church replaces the seed of Israel um, and the promise uh, but that's not quite that's only half the story in a lie um, because uh, the covenant was for Israel first uh, Christ dying on the cross was for his own house and he has fulfilled the covenant promise that was made to Abraham and he has saved Israel but Israel aren't saved and if you read Jeremiah and all the burden of the prophets there it's the Lord's heart running after Israel and pleading and why won't you be saved why I keep telling you why you won't be saved. That's why you won't be saved. So why won't you be saved? And it goes on like that. And uh, the Saviour has, God has fulfilled his promise to Israel. But they're not, for the Father's sake and the promises, the Lord has not forsaken the promise. It's just because of Israel are in unbelief and they rejected Christ. They're out of fellowship with God and they're out of the promise. And the, all the priesthood lines, like um, 
the faithful Levites and the 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 Cohen or the the priests, the high priesthood and the the bloodlines of Israel. All these people are still on the earth. They still have those uh, genetic inheritances of those righteous priest lines of that they're related to those people but because of apostasy and idolatry they inherited that generation of uh, priesthood and seed the seed of levi and all the other children of israel have inherited sin and sin was all throughout the seed of israel is in the hearts of it was in David, it was in Moses, it was it was in Aaron, it was in all the seed of Israel, they were sinners. They were wicked and rebellious backsliders. But God loves them and that's why God chose them to be glorified in their weakness. But they rebelled, they keep returning so every time the Lord gathered them under his wings and raised them and humbled them lifted them up they rebelled and because finally the, the Lord done all it, they just wouldn't listen and then they had you know they cut cut themselves off and um, I read the scripture where that comes to a head and the prophecy of Israel rejecting their own uh, saviour because it's a fiddling of promise prophecy of those curses it's the judgment of those curses it's the anger of the lord revealed mercifully so with one side of the sword he cuts off israel but with his mercy the other side of the blade he's outstretched he's outstretched today um, to israel he's not forgotten his seed um, this is very well clarified in um, Hosea 49. Can a woman forget her suckling child that she should uh, not have compassion on the son of her womb? Who's the son of her womb? It's, it's Isaac. It's Israel. It's Jacob. It's the seed. Yet they may forget. Yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Thy obstacles, thy adversity, all those problems you're facing are continually before me. And the Lord is outstretched to Israel and all the world. Um, so we've seen the... Uh, now it's... Um, We've seen the uh, patterns in Isaac, in, in the seed, Abraham the father, Abraham, Isaac, son, the seed, which uh, Jacob inherits, and he is the seed, and so Jacob's like a father and a son, Isaac's like a father and a son, and Abraham's a father and has a son, and he was a son, he's the son of God. He's also a son of his father, but that was in the flesh. He's been chosen to be the son of God and the father of a nation. And he has a son, Isaac. And Isaac has a son, Jacob. And they are one, one body, one people, one nation and one flesh. They're all blood, they're all blood related. So we have Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. We have God. It manifests through his glory in Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. As God is one... Abraham, Isaac and Jacob are one, although they're three, three people, they're one, they're one Israel, they're one seed, one blood, one nation and chosen, and it reveals that there's one Lord, one God and one spirit, and um, because Israel out the way, he brought in the Gentiles, and because of Israel out the way, it opens the door to the Gentiles, and today, the Gentiles are predominantly the, the seed of Israel or the commonwealth of Israel that was as it was in the Old Covenant, the faithful seed in the Old Covenant. And Israel fell out of the way and uh, 
the Gentiles have accepted the Lord and been saved and brought into the commonwealth of Israel while Israel today remain out of the way but not out of the promise because the promise today is for Israel and the Gentiles so in in the body of Christ in the body and commonwealth of Israel today the manifestation of the body of the children of God which was in Israel which is still of Israel and for Israel but it's now in Christ who is the king of Israel and he has adopted the Gentiles and grafted them in with the faithful Israelite seed but Israel as a nation as a people have because they've rejected Christ barring those people in that seed who have believed in Jesus Christ and been grafted back in to their inheritance which is the commonwealth of Israel which is the kingdom which is the the seed the body of the Lord the son of the Lord the child of the Lord um, so I am going to reveal the future prophecies for Israel how they are one nation and one people and the Lord's mind from his heart and mind for their restoration from the beginning from eternity to eternity how he had it all in mind and how it's all a perfect plan and a glorious plan to learn and discover about and study right, so let's go to uh, Exodus and then uh, I'll be finishing the first half Exodus 4 um, so going into uh, there's so many scriptures I, I discovered studying for this that um, it's another study and I've had to leave um, much out and it's quite it's to get through already and um, so I would encourage anybody to study these areas because they are there's some wonderful scriptures that will reveal the Lord's heart for his his people how how he loved them like children um, Exodus 4 as he does his saints his children today Uh, Exodus 4 oh, I can't remember what these scriptures are oh here we go right um, and thou and thou shalt say unto Pharaoh thus saith the Lord Israel is my son even my firstborn so there we have a type there that Israel is the, the, the son the body the body of Christ or but the children of God the sons of God so they are the the temple of the living God, because they're the they are His seed, His son. So the Lord has manifest His heart, mind, and will in His seed through Abraham. He revealed to Abraham the law. Uh, it, well, he through uh, the seed of Abraham was revealed the law uh, by Moses, who's the seed of Israel, who come from the loins of Abraham. So um, Israel is a type of the of the children of God, um, of the saints, of the the bride of Christ, the body of Christ today, and Israel, and, and that's Israel's inheritance. We've been grafted into Israel and her is inheritance because the Lord is the heir to the Father and has adopted us, and we are heirs with Him in the commonwealth of Israel and is the lost seed of Israel remain outside and if they're not grafted back in they will pe they <coughs> excuse me they will perish and those who will be grafted in will be the whole nation of Israel because the Lord's going to save them out of Jacob's trouble out of his wrath and uh, he's going to like he purged now here's a threefold prophecy like he purged 
the uh, seed taking them into the land because they have rebellion and making idols and uh, the gold car golden calf and how the Lord had to chastise them and keep them in the wilderness all that time before he could take them into the land so he had to clean out all the rebellion and all the murmurers and all the wicked and all those whose hearts were on idols and Egypt and the world and all the heathen stuff that goes with it and uh, just like the Lord is gonna, he's going to do the same thing in, in Jacob's trouble he's going to get rid of all the wicked all the wicked seed and he's going to save a small remnant out, out of the fire plucking the branch out of the fire um, and and it's just like the Lord said that he will judge his you know judgment starts in the church so like the scriptures say if we live for the, the flesh we will die if we live for the spirit we will be quickened by the spirit in in the flesh to over you know to overcome the flesh and um, so perhaps the lord is going to sift those um before the rapture before the taking of way because uh he done that in um to Israel and he's going to do that in future Israel so why should uh, the saints be uh, off the hook I mean I think it's the same Lord and I think that's a stark reminder because, that, because that's what he said you know that these were a type uh, to stop people going after the flesh going back into the world once you've been brought into into the spiritual body um, and I you know I'm as guilty I've fallen back and turned back and thankfully the Lord is merciful he's a, a Lord of second chances and he helped me restored me back and I'm very grateful and thankful and I pray I may stay uh, growing in the word and I hope this has been an encouragement to anyone in in study and it's wet wet their appetite for the word and to uh, live for the Lord to love the Lord and to to pick up your cross to die each day in the old nature and live for the spirit and live for the Lord and live for the winning of souls and then live for the abounding and magnification of the word in your own life and in the lives of those who are hungry in the world that they may see your light and uh, however little that is the Lord's promised to use whatever we do and he used that to his glory and whatever little thing you do he can take that and add that to other you know many things and cash in with your little thing but if you think your little thing's not worth anything you're going to hide it and then the Lord's not going to be able to bless you and use it and you're not going to be able to grow and you're not going to be um, indebted because the more you bless the more you're blessed and the more you want to bless and then it, it, it just increases before you can't you're overflowing with blessings and um, that's what the Lord desires but they're so like um the Lord and he he taught his his son Joshua the high priest when he anointed Joshua the high priest and 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 the prophet saw the the devil on his right hand and that was a type of Christ who uh, had the devil on his right hand you know uh, trying to tempt him trying to overthrow him but the Lord put Satan down he overcome the temptations is holy and sinless. And only the Lord Jesus Christ could do that. Only the Lord could beat uh, Satan because Satan wins as soon as you sin. Anyone sin, you're Satan's because you're fallen. Your um, your white's your white clean sheet. It's got a black mark on it, and that's going to keep you out of the the presence of God because you're a sinner, and God can't have sinners in His kingdom. And only the Lord could be, only a holy God could beat Satan, the uh, principality of darkness. 
that God created in opposition to uh, allow e evil because of free choice in man, because of sin and only Christ overcome Satan so like like Joshua and like the Lord and like it says in First Peter the, the devil, our adversary is like a roaring lion he's always prowling, he's always on our right hand he's always ready to trip us up so there's another type that Israel my son and even my firstborn right back to Isaiah Who have heard such a thing? Who have seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith God? Rejoice ye with Jerusalem and be glad with her, all ye that love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her, that they may suck, uh, they may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of the consolations, that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like the flowing stream. Then shall ye suck, ye shall be born upon her sides, and be dandled upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. So there's a prophecy that the Lord's uh, pro saying that, uh, that Israel will um, be born in one day. It will be born. He's reaffirming his promise. Uh, let's go to Ezekiel. Now this is a, a really deep study, but I just wanted to compare the body of Israel with the body of Christ and how the two go hand in hand. They're identical, but um, because of Israel's out of the covenant, they're out of the promise. It's been restored, but uh, it's in Christ fulfilled in Christ but that doesn't mean that Israel are redundant they are forgotten they are still the Lord's son um, out of the way and he's going to save them he's going to save his son in one day as the prophecy um, has revealed um, and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. One king shall be king of them all. And they shall be no more two nations, nor shall they be, be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with the, their idols, not with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and I will cleanse them, so shall, shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And David my servant um, shall be king over them, and they shall have one shepherd, they shall also walk in my judgments, and observe my statutes, and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, Wherefore your fathers have dwelt, and they, they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children for ever, and my servant David shall be their prince for ever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant, as prophesied in Zechariah of the... Uh, the, the lamp oils never needed to be uh, refilled, they're permanently refilled, which is a type of the everlasting covenant and the promise of the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
and salvation and eternal life which Christ fulfilled and, and fulfilled the promise of the covenant of the and, and cut off the old covenant and renewed it and, and it's the everlasting covenant which he promised Israel so they wouldn't have to keep offering sacrifices for sins with them and I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore my tabernacle all shall shall be with them yet I will be their God and they shall be my people and the heathen shall know that I the Lord is sanctify Israel with, with, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore now Israel are going to confuse all the prophecies and try and fulfill them themselves this prophecy is a prophecy of now if you notice King David now King David's been and gone and the Lord has going to restore David the prince to be the king in the millennial reign when he comes back after Jacob's trouble and the the temple will be restored in those times on the earth in the millennial reign and David will be a king in the stead of the, the Lord as king who will be king and who will rule over the earth and David will be hit on his right hand his prince as it's prophesied in Psalm 110 and Israel will be restored in the everlasting covenant they will all know the Lord and all the world would have been judged by this point all the wicked would have been dealt with and their, and Israel would be saved and they'll be restored back to their blessings and they'll be presented before the Lord and there will be festivals and uh, you know the, the Lord's kingdom will be in action and, and he'll have all his servants all his princes and all his children ministering un, under David under the Lord on the earth forever and ever that it, you know that's the promise of this prophecy for Israel um, let's go to the book of Daniel uh, 12 one. I'm just skimming through some prophecies and at, this, at th that time shall Michael stand up now this is t talking of the uh, Jacob's trouble time of Jacob's trouble which is uh, after the church has been raptured and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince so Michael's the principal principality and angel in the spirit realm uh, for Israel he's Israel's prince he's Israel's protector he's he's the angel of the Lord's angel he's the highest angel of the Lord of hosts and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people and Michael's the angel ministering unto Daniel uh, uh, stand up the children of thy people which is Israel and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since uh, there was a nation so this is the future prophecy of Daniel of the very last times reaffirming the prophecy and the promises and the patterns that have been revealed before in the, all the prophets, in the Psalms, in the kings, in the priests, in the seed, in the patriarchs, in the children of Israel. There was a nation even to that same time and it, at that time thy people shall be delivered. So this is Jacob's trouble where Israel is going to be saved in one, in one day, in one awful day everyone that shall be found written in the book everyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved in that day and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life so all those faithful Israelites that believed in Messiah will be raised to everlasting life and all those Israel seed that didn't to shame and everlasting contempt they will go into hell and hell is quite 
it, it's not a New Testament doctrine. It's all throughout the Old Testament, the, the, the uh, abode of everlasting hell. It's prophesied through many prophets, many psalms, that there is a hell. Regardless what um, uh, Israel may say, or teachers in... Uh, Jewish teachers that there's no hell it's all going to be wonderful and well they've they've misread the prophecies and they're in unbelief and 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 God doesn't hear them because and so they've lost the fellowship of his spirit because they've denied his son and this is the prophecy that it's going to, the Lord is you know he's kept his end of the bargain and it's it's fulfilling it's going to be fulfilled and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life some to shame and everlasting contempt and they that that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever but thou Daniel shut up the words and seal the book and seal the book even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So, identical prophecy to uh, John the Beloved, uh, John who was given the revelation of the prophecy of Jesus Christ. And here's Daniel prophesying of those same times that's in the book of Revelation again stating that Israel are going to go through that period and that's how they're going to be saved it's all throughout the the prophecies and um, it shows uh, because they rejected uh, the Godhead they rejected the Son so they're at, this is why Israel are out of the way because they didn't understand and then one day they're going to be restored. The Lord's going to draw them unto himself. But he's going to do it through the afari affliction. And he's going to bring them narrowly through that fire. Like um, calling a load of sheep across a tightrope. Across a gulf of uh, inferno. And Israel, little Israel, the faithful in Israel. The wicked that are going to perish. And be consumed by the fire and by the by the wars and by the uh, captivity of the Antichrist and other evil Gentile nations and forces in in cahoots with him, who are trying to dominate the world and and pose as the righteous and and the and the faithful seed in Israel today and the faithful or or the seed who aren't part of that who don't support that who don't know any different they're out of the way they're lost but they don't support what's going on in 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 the wicked hearts of the seed in israel um and the lord is going to uh cut those seed off but he's outstretched to all of those seed to even even today and those those seed can be saved and any any one of those who believes and calls upon their Messiah, on their Lord, and turns and repents and turns back, like Elijah's going to be the one, he's going to prepare the way, he's going to turn their attention back, he's going to blow the whistle and pull out the, the cotton wool out their ears, and he's going to help them turn back and... All that generational hardness is going to be melted and they're going to be brought back to that point where the world is encroaching around them. And at that point, that's when they're realising and they're turning back. And then the wolf comes and then just as the wolf's about to snatch Israel, the Lord comes, boom, and saves Israel. And uh, Daniel's prophesied at that time, as John did, and and. The revelator is Jesus Christ, the 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 uh, Son of God, the, who come in the flesh, and uh, He's revealed it to Israel through His prophet Daniel, and He revealed it to Israel and the Gentile nations through His prophet John, through His son John, through His son Daniel, and it. 
it reveals his heart, mind and will for his people. Um, let's go with one more scripture. Oh, two more scriptures and then we go to the New Testament to back up everything I've just gone over. How the Lord is fulfilled and how the Lord is revealed in the flesh as he did in the, in the Old Testament. Um, how the patterns are same and how we see that in the New Testament. And it's because of the New Testament that we can comprehend it and see it in the Old Testament. Uh, but if we didn't have Christ and his light, we wouldn't be able to see it. Um, right, well, it's F and F. I'm not sure where it is. In order of the little prophets. Joel and so many scriptures all covering this prophecy um, I'm only looking at a few Zephaniah uh, Zephaniah Zephaniah uh, 3 verse 9 um, for then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. And there's another prophecy in Isaiah where um, Zechariah where they will all know the Lord. Every one of them will know the Lord. Just like the Lord wanted them, all Israel, to go up to the mountain with Moses and know the Lord. But it broke his heart when Moses came down and found that they'd all turned back to worshiping idols, and they would, and they didn't want to go up to the Lord. They couldn't; they're too frightened to go up to the Lord. The Lord knew this, and the Lord so that's why they had kings. And through the kings, the Lord showed his righteousness and their unrighteousness and their sin and he delivered them from their sin and their unrighteousness by sending the son of his righteousness in the flesh and there's another prophecy for then will i turn to the people a pure language so the lord's going to bring them into back to a pure language that they may call upon my name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. So they, that's a matching prophecy that they all, all Israel will know the Lord and they'll all worship him and know him in one consent, one heart and one mind and one will. So let's look at the bad news for Israel in what happened. Why did they, why are they like that they are today? Um, Chapter 13, no, yeah, chapter 13. Right, here's a, here's a very sim, uh, clear prophecy. Uh, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, said the Lord, two parts therein shall cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will find them as silver refined, and try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and, and I will hear. Then I will say, It is my people. And they shall say, The Lord is my God. <laughs> So we see a two-fold prophecy here. We, we have the first advent of the Lord. Awake, O my, awake, O sword. That's his word. That's his son. Against my shepherd, that's Christ. Sword, Christ. And against the man, that is my fellow. That is his relation, that's his blood. That's his seed, that is Israel. 
away and against the man that is my fellow, said the Lord, and smite the shepherd, smite his own self. So the Lord smites his own self on the cross, and the sheep scatter. So the sheep are kill their king, and they scatter, they are scattered for rejecting their Messiah. And in the second half, in the fulfilling of prophecy, they're waiting for the their Messiah to come, who's come, who will be the false Messiah, is when, and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, and he'd started in the first fruits, he turned his hand and saved a remnant in the first advent, and that was the the early church and I will turn my hand upon my, on the little ones and it shall come to pass that in all the lands this is a future prophecy of it coming Israel being gathered back into the land and Jerusalem being restored that this is the bad bit because this is because they've rejected the shepherd in the first round the first meridian in the meridian of of I lo, I lo, behold, I come in, in the middle of this book. It was, uh, oh, I can't, forgive me, I can't pronounce the scripture, but it was prophesied that the Lord will, will, um, is revealed in the, in, in the pages of the scriptures. And he will come in the, um, you know, in the mid, middle of time and save his people. Because they rejected him, this is it's going to come round again. It's going to restore back to that point. We're going to have a repercussion of the events, like the the captive, the fir the first captivity and the restoration, and then the rejection of the Messiah, and now the restoration of Israel again. That they're going to get it all mumble, mumbled up and jumbled because they're going to rebuild the temple. The, the temple's already rebuilt. It's in Christ is, is the living temple and he was the high priest and he offered himself as the Passover lamb and he fulfilled the temple, the need for the Jews to have a temple. But that temple that they're expecting is his temple, he's going to build for them, bring it down from heaven and it's going to be put in, it's going to be put onto earth. And that will be in the millennial reign after the Lord has the, uh, fulfilled this part of the prophecy. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, said the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. So two parts of the seed of Israel in Jacob's trouble are going to be cut off and die because of unbelief and their wicked um, belief going after their own vain imaginations thinking that they're pleasing God and they're so hard and that they can't see it but um, and I will bring the third part through the fire so there's a third part of that body of the seed that are going to turn are going to return to their Messiah because they realise that the Messiah that they were looking for was the anti-Messiah and he's a deceiver, he's a wicked prince of Israel, they've deceived him. But this one third aren't going to go by it. But the other third are support the other two thirds are probably supporting him and you know, helping him and all sorts and behind it. So they're going to be cut off and die for their wickedness and rebellion. And those in the in the middle, in the neutral, those who haven't made their minds up who don't know any different are going to be restored through the refining fire of silver and uh, will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried they shall call on my name and I will hear them and say this that is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God so there's a prophecy again now Israel uh, broke the covenant through their unbelief and through their rejection of the Saviour um, quickly uh, right 
I will feed the flock of slaughter. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. Um, the sword shall be upon his arm. I'm reading the wrong scripture. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Right. Uh, I will feed the flock of slaughter. Uh, even you, O poor of the flock. And I took unto me two staves, and one I called beauty, and the other I called band, and I fed the flock. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month. My soul loved them, and their soul also adored me. So this, this is talking about the uh, apostate priesthood in the Christ time. And uh, the Lord is... Even, O oh poor flock, I took unto me two staves. So even even his weak and poor people uh, got cut off and killed in the because he was rejected. And uh, and I took unto me two staves. The one I called beauty, and the other I called bands. And I fed the flock. So. Beauty is Christ, and bands, I believe, is Judas, or is a representation of the betrayal. Uh, so, like the um, wicked priests, the apostate Jews, are the uh, in bed with Babylon and the Roman Roman uh, dominance represent bands, and that's who Judas was. He was part of that lot. He was one of them trying to deceive the Lord. And Judas is bands, and Christ is beauty. And he cut himself off. Beauty, the shepherd, smote the shepherd, and the sheep should scatter. They killed their king, so Israel's got no defence, because they rejected their protector. And the other I call bands, which is the covenant between the God of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, with, with the... Uh, the uh, line of the Levites and uh, the seed of Israel, and I and he cut them off. He cut both off. He cut his himself off, and then he cut his covenant off with them. And I fed the flock. Three shepherds also. The three shepherds are three high priests or three priest priests in 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 that involvement. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month, and my soul loathed them. So there was three wicked um, priests in in that body in that influence in that drive that the lord cut off in one month and my soul loathed them and their soul also had, had whored me so they hate they hated god so these people must have been wicked what were they doing in the lord's in the lord's name in the lord's seat where the lord in his holy temple and in his looking after his people so when when the lord arrives he finds these three people that loathed him then said I I will not feed you so this is uh, prophesying about Israel I will not feed you that 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 dieth let it die that that is all that is to be cut off let it be cut off and let the, and let the rest eat every one the flesh of another so the Lord was really upset he has just done it he's done his nut he's taken himself and broke the promise he broke the covenant that he made with Israel they are out the dark they are out the door on your bike you're not living in my house you're cut off let it die even the poor of the flock but the Lord restored his covenant and I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder, that I may break my covenant, which I have made with all the people. And it was broken in that day. And so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. So there's a fulfilling of the prophecy. So when it, Jesus died on the cross, and it all went wrong in Israel, they all knew that he was the Messiah, that he was the Lord and he was God, and he was beauty, he was the fulfilment of prophecy. And there it is, so that's the promise of Israel, that's why Israel are falling out of the way. But, 
he hasn't forgotten his covenant, his promise that it's their land. He's not forgotten them. He's going to restore them through the fire. And even so, he's outstretched today that any one of those seed can be saved along with the Gentile nations by believing and trusting in the death, burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, so we're going to move now. I'm going to have another pause because my arm's aching. And then we're, I'm going to finish off with the uh, New Testament. Hi, right, brothers and sisters. Um, back from a little rest and uh, refreshment. Uh, thank you for bearing with me. Uh, if you've come this far, you've come to... We've come to the most... Uh, wonderful part, it's all, all downhill slide here for now um, if you've been following you have seen how the scriptures through from beginning to end are revealing the whole plan of salvation the, the nature of God the manifestations of God and the manifestation in the spirit, in the flesh. So we've climbed. Now I was praying, as you, you probably, you wouldn't appreciate how much of an obstacle this has been for me to f fear, almost, oh this is too hard for me to do and lay it out and just, when I was studying all these scriptures, um, I, I was fe feeling or thinking it's going to be like passing a kidney stone to do this and I, I was praying and having all this adversity and thanks to the Lord it has been a, a joy and I've persevered with faith and praise God that he's blessed me to do so and get, get, get this far through the study so it's a good point uh, this it, we're kind of at the peak but it's the, the, the final part and I'm going to move a bit more uh, quickly and fluently now and uh, I just invite any brothers and sisters uh, I'm just going to say it as, as it is um, we're revealing the uh, by the word by an now, if you're a brother and sister and you're and you're leaning on opinion, uh, I just would like to say, um, go with the word, go with the scriptures, because I f there's um, what I'm about to say now is probably going to offend many Christians. It's going to offend many p uh, people who believe that they're they're following the word and the way. And you'll probably be shocked by some of the things I say. Now, remember we, uh, we've read in uh, Romans 8 already how we are adopted into the spirit body and how that um, Christ uh, was sin for us and died, the flesh died. He put it in the ground and brought us up a new spirit. So we're a spiritual body. And... I've covered the scripture where it's already said the flesh it war wars with the spirit and the flesh and sin is death and death is war and anger and violence and hatred. So from this point on I've I've brought you to the peak of the the also the, the sort of meridian where the of the Old Testament that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. So God is the same God, the same Lord, the same Spirit as he has been forever. And we started in Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, hear O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, one God. And Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. So really... Um, I'm going to share a few things um, and really for 
the understanding of the Lord's heart, mind and will for his people Israel and how the um, replacement theology, which is a Catholic, a Catholic planted seed and doctrine to confuse people and to lie and deceive and because it's in unbelief, it's a fleshy body, it's not a spiritual body, it's not Christ's body, it's not the Christian body, but it's a body of evil manifest. And it's clearly been revealed throughout the scriptures, the heart, mind and will of this, this system and the men within that system. And uh, it's, the Lord has, um, revealed his heart and mind for Israel and the Lord has in the spirit taught us to love his enemy so we're going to be looking at how the Lord feels for his people now you may think the Rockefellers and all that are wicked and evil and sure they are wicked and evil but they are if they are the seed of Israel, they are generally the seed of Israel, whether that's half, whether if they've got the genetic inheritance and they're predominantly the blood of uh, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, they are the Lord's people. Now, if you didn't know this, um, I haven't got the scripture to reference, but the... Uh, the amount of people that were created, the Gentiles, was based on the number of the seed of Israel. And whether you like it, whether you're envious, whether you think it's unfair, the Lord has put Israel first in his heart. They're his people, they're his bosom, they're his son. And Christ is the fulfillment of the living body embodiment of that promise to come that was, that is, and that will be, like faithful Israel was, faithful Israel is today, because the seed of Israel have believed in their Messiah, and have been grafted back in with the faithful seed of their fathers, of the seed of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and all the faithful, and those who are out the way, are still beloved of the Lord, he loves them. And when you think of all the evil they've done and you can get wrapped up in your flesh and you can warring after the flesh and contention after the flesh, but regardless, the most important thing that the Lord cares about is suffering the sins of the world. For the seed of Israel, the most wicked, the least wicked, because by Israel he has blessed all nations because of himself given us the seed of Israel coming as amongst the seed as the king and lord and the high priest and, and God and their saviour, our saviour taking upon the stripes of iniquity spilling his precious blood spilling his precious blood to save all mankind from sin Israel first and the gentile second and his heart is outstretched to these people this is why uh, the lord is um doesn't like um anti-semitism in any any degree even the wicked you know he knows that they're wicked you know that's why he died for them and that is really quite obvious when you have that heart, mind and will in the spirit but when you don't, when you fall or turn from that you become fleshy and you become hard and you become like the seed of Israel like the promise and um, so the Lord loves Israel he knows that Zionism is uh, corrupted he knows that Israel are in bed with the Gentile nations he knows that the all the nations of the world are compromised to the Catholic Church, as Israel are. So if you are, are the seed of Israel, or a part of the, uh, that body of people I've referenced, or the Anti-Defamation League, you really ought to realise that your enemies are 
not Christians, not Bible believing Christians, but the Catholic Church, and you are trusting in them, and you are therefore guilty with them for their sins, as they are guilty mixing with you, encouraging you to sin, and they are your enemies because they're the ones who teach about replacement theology, and they're the ones who persecuted you. Use other of your seed to do the same, to give you a bad name. And um, they were who were responsible for the Holocaust, the Holocaust, not only of Jews, but uh, Bible-believing Christians and anyone poor and that, that they deem sickly. And if your seed had anything, any part of that, um, you, you have been judged by your Messiah. And he is outstretched to save you from your condemnation and your punishment. Um, if you're a, a Bible-believing Christian and you're going after the uh, Israel and um, cussing them and s slagging them off, well, you're, you fall into the flesh and your nature. You need to be restored to your first love. You need to have a change of mind about how you view Israel because they're the Lord's people and they're first on his mind even though they're out of the way they're not forgotten they're not they're not um, completely out of his mind he's going to return his attention fully back to these people and he's going to and what he done on the cross is going to be realized and it's coming their way and it's going to draw them unto himself like he promised he's going to draw all flesh unto himself so let's quickly go through the... So we've seen the Old Testament manifestation, how that God is the same yesterday. So he's the same in the Old Testament as he is today, and as he will be in the future in, in Jacob's trouble. It's the same God, and it's the same Spirit, and it's the same Word. If you're, if you're a Jew, and, you, and, you're a, and you, you, you've come across this video, Read the book of Hebrews, it's all for you, it's all for your seed, and you will understand it. And, and measure it with the Old Testament, and you'll see that Jesus was your Messiah, he's your God, he's your Saviour, he's your Father, and he's calling you, he's hissing for his seed, and he's outstretched for his people, as he's outstretched for the Gentile nations, as he's outstretched for all men. And he was revealed in the New Testament. He is the embodiment of the New Testament. This is his fulfilment of prophecy. Um, which your fathers rejected. And you've inherited what your fathers sins were and that's why you're so hardened and that's why the Lord's so merciful to Israel and pitiful because they've heard, uh, inherited the curses of generations of sin and it's gonna and the sin's gonna run out and it's going to bring about Jacob's trouble because it's all the world's sins have run out so um, I, if, if you are perhaps listening and you are a Jew I'd, I'd encourage you to read the book of Hebrews and read the Old Testament and and if you want to know your saviour he's the same God and he's outstretched and all you have to do is believe in the name he's given which was Jesus Christ and you've been hardened against that name because of unbelief and you've you, f you fear the shadow of your God. But I'd invite you not to look at the shadow, but the light that casts that shadow. And the truth on, on, on the Old Testament prophecy. And I'm reveal now that it's fulfilled in the New Testament. It's the same. In the beginning, and we're looking at this, as this subject's the Godhead. In the beginning was the Word, Jesus Christ. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. 
and without him was not anything made that was made. Error. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light that was the true light which light every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So here's a, a testimony that the word spoken, the word that appeared to uh, Moses and Abraham was made flesh. One God, one Lord, one word, one saviour, one God. And he held his glory, um, and we beheld his glory. He had, so Israel has already given a witness. Those who believed beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So that is um, a testament in the New Testament. Um, let's go to Colossians. For in him, right, uh, let's read a bit, uh, yeah. And ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So there's a testimony that in Jesus Christ, who is God in the manifest in the flesh, the only begotten of the Father, in the flesh, in the Son, who is God, in the Father, in the flesh, on the right hand of God, while he's on earth, with the fullness of the Godhead bodily, one Lord and one God, and the saints and Israel grafted in are complete in him, because he is the head of the body, he is the head of all principality and power because he's the king and god of this universe jesus christ okay let's go to john 8 Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. So there we have Jesus, given a testimony, or, or being obedient to his Father's will, testifying that before Abraham was God. So Jesus was the word of God spoken to Abraham. Um, called Abraham 
appeared to Abraham, appeared to Moses, was revealed through the similitude of the prophets and the seed of Israel. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was I am. I and my father are one so there we have the Lord uh, testifying that he is equal to the father he is one with the father he is the father I and my father are one Okay, right. For there are three that bear record in heaven. So we've already seen in the Old Testament the Father, the Word, the Angel of the Lord, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. So we have a, because of the uh, begottenness of the Son, we have the uh, embodiment of the Father in the flesh, and the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, given to the uh, believer, after Christ's death, burial and resurrection at, at Pentecost and the pouring out of the, the Holy Spirit because Christ had uh, gone before us and uh, into the heavens to set that hope before us and sending the promise of the Holy, the indwelling of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and the, the Holy Spirit, because Christ has fulfilled the operation, we see that the Holy Spirit is one with the Father. It testifies of the Father. They are free that bear record in the heaven, the Father. And we know the Father because of the Son, the Word, and the Word written, and the, and the, the angel of the Lord ministering to the seed of Israel. And um, by the by the Spirit, by the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost sent to indwell the believer and to uh, be brought into the presence of the Father to be heirs with Christ in the Father, as the Father is glorified in the Son, and the Son has glorified the Father and sent the witness of his Spirit which testifies of the Godhead, of the nature of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Right, let's go to John, back to John. John 14, uh, three, let's go to 3 to 7. Um, and I, I, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. So, so the Lord is telling his disciples, his children, his saved, his saved seed, these little ones, the, the poor of the flock, that he's going to go before them and that they know the way. 
They, he's revealed the way, and he is the way, and he's given them the way, he's drawn them onto himself, and he's going to uh, save them and baptise them into his Father's kingdom. And whether ye I go, ye know, and the way ye know. So he's talking about his death, and his death, burial, and resurrection. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus say unto, unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And I from henceforth, and from henceforth ye know him, and ye have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, I have been so long time with you, and yet, yet hast thou not known me, Philip. He that hath seen me, hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. And it was true, he, that Peter, uh, Philip did know, but it, it was something that they were gifted with, and they, re they, they, they had a testimony, but they hadn't, they hadn't grown into their shoes, into their clothes, into their what they'd been given, which is the same pattern for all believers in understanding the um, the gospel more more fully as we grow as Christians. So we see that um, how how the far, how Jesus is revealing. To, to to them that he is the father that they've seen the father and they know the father because he was manifest in the flesh in his son and uh, that, that's a testimony to to his uh, to his seed to his house that he drew unto, that he chose and drew unto himself and revealed the father through his works through his love through his mercy through his miracles, through his power, through his power over sin, his power over death, power over all the principalities which he <coughs> he displayed, and then he died. He fulfilled the pro prophecy, and with his precious blood, he he saved the he he was the savior of the world. He loved the world, and uh, died to save all men from their sins, and. Uh, he was revealed in by sending the Holy Spirit, and the witness of the Holy Spirit is the indwelling of of the um, the Lord and God. The the mediator is the Lord Jesus Christ, come in the flesh. The Word of God. He's a mediator of the Father sent to die for the sins of the world, and the Lord obediently in His Father's will suffered to die for the sins of all men, to fulfil his Father's will, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And he and He was, and he is. And uh, the, Holy Wit the Holy Ghost is a witness received of that glory, of that, um, the truth, of the light, of, of the living God, the Father revealed in his Son. Um, let's go to First Corinthians. Eight, six. Just a few more scriptures to uh, wrap up. Um, To us there is but one God, 
the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom all things, and we by him. And let's go back to Deuteronomy one more time. Where I started. Um, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy uh, soul, and with all thy might. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Right, let's go to Ephesians. Lost the scripture. Um, never mind. Oh, here we go. Got the wrong wrong chapter. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, endeavouring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is only one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through, through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the grace of grace, uh, gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Now that he is ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And, uh, and it goes on. So the Lord fulfilling prophecy, descending above, below all, and being exalted, humbling himself, lowering himself, lowly and coming on the um, on a cult, the prophecy fulfilled that there is one Lord, there's one body, the body of the body of Israel, the body, the seed, grafted into the King, into the body of Christ, fulfilled the new and everlasting covenant, and one Spirit, the Spirit of the Father, sent in in the heart of his Son, in the flesh, even as you are called into one hope of your calling. So through him, you are brought into uh, one body, into the the this body of Christ into the commonwealth of Israel, grafted in with Israel into the vine, into the Lord, one Lord, one faith, there's only one way, there's only one true faith in, in the one God and one Lord of Israel and one baptism, there's only one baptism, the baptism of fire, you must be born again, you must believe and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, one God and Father of all. So Christ is God and Father of all in the flesh, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So I'm going to end there, brothers and sisters, and that's going to be an opening into, uh, God willing, I'm going to do... 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12 next and that will expound a bit on what we've been given the gift we've been given that each is a, a, a child of God as a, um, a body part as a member of the body of Christ um, so I hope you uh, enjoyed, 
you're to the end of this scripture and thank you for bearing with me I hope it's been edifying I hope it's cleared up some any confusion you may have and I pray it's been a magnification of of the Lord's word and the gift that he's given me I hope that's increased your gift and whetted your appetite to study the word to grow in the word and to trust the word and to love love his people to live for the spirit and not for the flesh um, and to uh, abound for the Lord's word and heart to be magnified to go out and uh, be a light to the world and serve the Lord because um, the scriptures um, says when our Lord returns there will there won't be much faith in the earth and uh, and it it would be one of the f fears in my own walk is well I don't want to miss out on the blessings the Lord has for me out of fear out of sin out of whatever it is that can keep you away from your first love so I'd invite you brothers and sisters to please pray pray for me that I can um, continue and I can n not you know not be found unto dishonor but to be found unto honor and and the Lord to be glorified and and you know that I can thank the Lord and praise the Lord and not be you know not be out of the way and I encourage any of you that um, who desire to be faithful to pray for one another and to to seek the Lord's heart, mind and will for you in your own own walk and to experience that uh, um, continual blessing and to you know to cook and to uh, magnify and so the Lord's word can have free course and if you're really weak and struggling I pray that this has been an encouragement to you and for to help how it helped my confidence to um not measure to uh be to be grateful and thankful and to just trust the lord leading your steps and to encourage you to go and serve and live for him and not not for your fear not for flesh not for any other reason um but that that takes nourishment that takes discipline that takes time so any new believers I encourage, encourage you to be patient and to st keep studying the word and to to rest in the Lord for him to uh, exalt you in due time that you may um, continue abounding in, in, in steadfastness and and be a blessing in the Lord's hands to reach somebody in your life somebody in your circle who needs to hear the gospel and the lord will whatever your gift that the lord has chosen and i'm going to cover this in god willing in the future how how we shouldn't compare so i'm going to be looking at some heavenly principles of how why the lord raises one as a king and one as a servant and how each are blessed in the kingdom and without one we can't have the other so I hope you, you, if you're feeling quite insignificant and lost and overwhelmed by it that you realise that you're a, a beloved son or daughter of the Lord and uh, he's got a wonderful work for you and you've got a wonderful place in his kingdom and to rejoice in that and, and be thankful for that and not compare because um, you look up to the Lord has put those big pieces in there to, to for blessings of everybody, and He's put that little piece in there to bless everybody. So everybody has an equal share. It's a just share, and the Lord is a just measure. He's a just, holy, loving God, a merciful. So I hope that encourages you, encourages you to, a, you know, to um, go forth in in confidence in your testimony and uh, I'll leave that with you and I pray that has been a blessing and a comfort and that's, that's um, helped somebody and um, I'll close there in the name of the Lord and thank the Lord uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, God the Father 
sending his son and I'm grateful for his mercy and grace and revealing his heart in my heart through his son and how his son is uh, faithful and he's with me and he's got me this far and I pray God willing that I can continue to um, share those blessings he's uh, shared with me so I, I bid you uh, farewell and uh, Maranatha Okay, this is um, going to be some extras on uh, the Biblical Godhead and uh, I wanted to quickly add these um, points in of the scriptures which I invite people to measure and examine and I think it shows um, the manifest, manifest, manifestations of God in the, in the spirit and in the flesh in his son, our Lord Jesus Christ and how it shows uh, God in three and three in one God. So there's one Lord and one God. And uh, I'm going to show you some examples in the, um, the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ and his resurrection and uh, a parenthesis of those um, two points to show uh, clearly what the scriptures teach. So I want to quickly share. I wanted to also add um, a scripture which I'll read after this one. Um, but just to refresh, uh, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So we see there that God, the Father, is a spirit, the Son is a spirit, Holy Spirit is spirit. It's one God, one, one Lord. Uh, one creator and he created all things through his son and his son he sent his son and he became flesh to uh, in the image of God in the expression of God in the flesh and he is God he is equal of God in his father and uh, I'm going to read um, Regarding his um, his plan, his uh, plan for his seed, Israel, and, and the plan for the Gentile nations. Uh, we go to Ephesians chapter two. I quickly skim through these uh, extra scriptures. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember, that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, but that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands. So, Paul speaking to the uh, the, the church in to the Ephesians who are Gentiles and it's speaking to those of us who are Gentiles because uh, in the in the gospel preached to the Gentiles by Paul because uh, he's commissioned for the Gentiles it's it's his works we're we're studying his testimony um, but at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Now that's what, that's the main term I wanted to use uh, to um, share and express, commonwealth of Israel. And to consider that um, if you think of, you've got the best intentions of people, the commonwealth of people in heart. And, and, and to consider the gospel plan was the Lord to uh, be manifest in his people in Israel and so this is where all the 
for the law and love and uh, a righteous nation and a, an independent and free nation. It comes from God's heart. And he, his heart is the commonwealth of all people. But it started with Israel. So as uh, Gentile believers, we've been brought into the commonwealth of Israel with, with um, in Christ, in the body, as the uh, Israelites of the faithful Israelites of the past were in the commonwealth of Israel on earth through faith to come and he came and uh, that opened the door to the Gentiles as we, what's being preached here so the, the Gentiles have been invited into the body of God into the spirit of God into the kingdom of God through his son Jesus Christ um, so I wanted to add that scripture being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promises having no hope and without God in the world. So we were out of the, um, Gentiles were out of the covenant, Old Testament covenant promises, kept out, having no hope without God in the world. Because the Gentile heathen nations didn't know God, only the Jews in Israel knew God. It's only through Jesus Christ that the Western world learned about, um, about God and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. It was only people who would have known the Jews would have had any idea about them. And these people come and go. So we only have a knowledge of, of the Holy Word through the Lord Jesus Christ and the Gospel preached. Otherwise we would have remained without hope in ignorance. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he, he is our peace who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of petition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, to make in himself of twain one new man, so make him peace, and that he being recon uh, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby and came and preached peace to you that were afar off, and to them that were nigh, Jew and Gentile. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the prophets, apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. So I wanted to add those scriptures. Um, Ephesians 4, 6. And just to reaffirm... Um, Endeavouring to keep the unity of the spirit in bond of peace. In in the bond of peace, there is one body and one spirit. Even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Okay. Well, I'm gonna cover now. I'd like to be, um share with um, my brothers and sisters the um, parenthesis on Jesus' baptism. So I'm going to go through each, each book. Um, I'll start back and go to the front. Right, let's start with um, John 1. Right, this is uh, the Lord's Baptism, and this is all four accounts. I'm going to go through all four accounts and uh, cover this um, event of the Lord Jesus Christ and with uh, John the Baptist and 
God the Father speaking and the Holy Spirit and as the Lord was um, manifest in the flesh and being and preparing the way being baptized by his chosen witness John um, verse 3 just verse 3 I think uh, John have I got the right chapter no I've lost it right perhaps it's 2 33 perhaps yes right and John um, and John bear record saying I saw the spirit descending from heaven let's go um, a bit of context the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith behold coming unto him and saith behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world this is he of whom I said after me cometh a man which is prepared before me for who for he was before me, and I knew him not, but that, that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bear record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Okay, so um, we're going to see four, three accounts very similar to this. And there's only one account which shows something different. And it shows the same difference in the baptism of Jesus and the resurrection. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to give my thoughts, but I'm just going to read all the scriptures. So we're going to go to um, Mark 1. Let's go to, no, let's go to Luke 3. Let's go backwards. 26. Now when all the people were baptised, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptised and praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape. Now consider that, a bodily shape. Is that, is that in the shape of the body of the Lord, in, in like the angel of the Lord? And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape, like a dove, like a dove doesn't say as a dove, it says like a dove, in a bodily shape, like a dove, upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. So that's, there's a, the Father speaking, the Son in the flesh and the Holy Spirit descending in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee am I well pleased. So that's the only account, as an I'll keep going. Um, Matthew 3. This is the final account. Oh, Mark. Let's go to Mark now. Mark 1. nine and ten and it came to pass in those days that jesus came from nazareth of galilee and was baptized of john in jordan and straight away coming up out of the water he saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descended upon him and there came a voice from heaven saying thou art my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and immediately the spirit drew driven him into the wilderness Okay, um, Matthew, John, Matthew 3. So they have to consider all the accounts together. Um, otherwise we can miss something. 322. 
uh, can't be 322 uh, 16 to 17 uh, then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him but John forbade him saying uh, I am need to be baptized of thee and comest thou to me and Jesus answered answering said unto him suffer it to be so for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness then he suffered him and Jesus when he was baptized went up straight away out of the water and lo the heavens were opened and under him he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him so that's a different uh, the same accounts but with a, just a bit more detail um, he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And, a, a, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So that's all four accounts of the Lord's baptism and the, the witness from heaven, from the Father, and the Holy Spirit as a sign to John. Um, and a testimony of the light and uh, glory of, of God in, in the Son that John was um, given to recognise and testifies of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and uh, of the Lord God and Saviour in the flesh the Son of God, Jesus Christ um, My last four scriptures are the Lord's resurrection and considering that the rolling back of the stone and where Jesus was and all the events surrounding that simultaneously so you have to consider in time all these four events as one event and that's why it's important to read all four scriptures otherwise you can and it's very difficult you have to go back and forth and back and forth and it's hard to keep it all in your attention turning the pages um, well I'll start uh, John 20 uh, I'll start with Mark um, Mark 16 1 to 7 And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? sepulchre sepulchre and when they looked they saw that the stone was rolled away for it was very great and entering into the sepul uh, sepulchre they saw a young man sitting on the right side clothed in a long white garment and they were frightened and he said unto them be not afraid ye seek Jesus of Nazareth which was crucified he is risen he is not here Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. Okay. Luke 24. Right, consider all those. The stone's been rolled back and... Uh, the sisters in, in the Lord have found that it's empty and they've been given instruction to go and tell the disciples. Uh, Luke 24. One to eight. 
Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered unto the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and, remem and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and, and to all the rest. Um, Okay, right, John. Right, so consider that the, the sisters Mary and uh, and Joanna, the mother of James, and other women that were with them, found that the sepulchre, the stone had been rolled back, and Christ has risen. Now, consider those, keep those thoughts together. Um, we're going to go to John. Uh, chapter 20 and these are very important considerations to make um, considering everything that, um, that I've laid down from the beginning to consider it all together uh, John 20 1 to 5 The first day of the week cometh, uh, week cometh, Mary Magdalene early. When it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and see if the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, the other, the other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he stooping down, and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Um, and the napkin... Um, then come of Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and see if the linen clothes lie and the napkin that was about his head not laying with the linen clothes but wrapped together in a place by itself then went in also the other disciple which came first to the sepulchre and he saw and believed for as yet they knew not the sepulchre not the uh, scripture that he must rise again from the dead then the disciples went away again unto their home. Right, let's carry. Let's uh, pick it up now. This is uh, not, this is switching uh, uh, the attention now to Mary. Uh, on the same the, uh, the same day, but Mary stood without of the sepulchre weeping. So the disciples of Mary is left to herself weeping. Just Mary. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping, and as she wept and stooped down and looked at the sepulchre, and see if two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, 
Rabboni, which is to say, Master, Jesus saying unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. Okay, so there we have it, the Lord, the stone's been rolled back, it's em the tomb is empty, the sepulchre is empty. The only appearing, the first appearing here is to, the, uh, to Mary, as a type of the, uh, the body of Christ, the church. Um, now, I'm not going to get into that, uh, Jesus was married and that nonsense. Jesus was the Lord, he wasn't, he, he never married and had children and any, any uh, baloney like that. Just what it, what it says in the scriptures. I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. So consider that... Um, that, that that very carefully um, so the Lord has not ascended I'm going to turn now to Matthew now this is the like in the bodily shape the Holy, the Holy Spirit comes down in bodily shape and the, and the light the Spirit of God uh, lights in uh, rests upon him shines upon him or rest when, uh, I can't remember the scripture um, and uh, now the account in Matthew of that another difference, just that one point, that one little extra point, is this. Now rem just remember that Jesus has not yet ascended to the Father, and and we know from what we've already studied in the scriptures that the Father ministered through His Son, through the Word, through uh, Jesus. Uh, as the angel of the Lord. Jesus is the angel of the Lord. The Father is in Jesus. Jesus is in the Father. And the after the Lord's, now he's resurrected, he's physically, um, by his grace, by the grace of God, by his um, power, he's taken up his life and he's in the flesh. The stone's been rolled back. Now, Jesus has not been, he didn't go up to heaven and then come back down and roll the stone back. And that's what we are looking at. That's a very um, important point to uh, study in the, in the scriptures. Um, Matthew uh, 28 verse 2. And behold, there was a great earthquake, and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. That is the only... His countenance was like lightning, his raiment white as snow, and for fear of him the keepers did shake and become as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. He go before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, I have told you. So we see the angel of the Lord. Now the angel of the Lord here is the Holy Spirit, because uh, the power and he's sent from heaven he comes from heaven the lord descended from heaven the angel of god descended from heaven and rolled back the stone to allow the messiah the resurrected lord to go before them and he waited there until the the sisters arrived and then he gave the witness of the father and of the son and the holy spirit of god and God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus are one. And that, that is what the scripture is showing. And, uh, um, and I'll conclude then. I'll leave you those um, points to study. Uh, not to trust what I have said. 
but to study the word and trust in the Lord and God and his holy scriptures. And, and I hope this has been a blessing to any brother and sister in the Lord. And um, I'll, leave, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Good night.